Take your Bible this morning, if you would, please. Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, please. This morning we're going to read verses 9 through 13, what's uh, usually referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to read those verses, just we're going to read the, all of them in unison together today, verses 9 through 13. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing pleased to read God's word, and let's begin together on verse 9. Ready? After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, add your blessing to the reading of this scripture here this morning. And Lord, thank you for the wonderful music so far that we've enjoyed today. Uh, Lord, it's just been a, a, a good spirit in this place this morning. And Lord, we sense in a real way the spirit of the Lord here this morning. And I'm asking you to continue to move and work in our hearts. Uh, bless the special and prepare our hearts so we'll be ready to receive the truth from your word this morning. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered the haven of rest. I've anchored my soul. safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace, and faith taking hold of the word. My fetters fell off, and I anchored my soul. The haven of rest is my Lord. Beloved is mine. I 
I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep. In Jesus I'm safe evermore. That's good. Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer this morning. We thank you, Lord, for, again, the wonderful music today. And, Lord, it's uh, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We do pray for those who are not able to be with us today. I'm asking God that you would touch their bodies and bring healing to them, uh, raise them up that they could be back with us uh, very, very soon. Now, Father, I ask for your help as I come to this message today, and I pray that you would help each individual here, that they'd listen carefully, and that we would understand uh, the truth that we're about to look at this morning, and it would be a help, uh, Lord, to the people of God that are in this place today. So meet with us, and may your will be done in each life, in each heart. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. And uh, I must not quite be there yet, Brother Bill, so would you turn that off for me? That just seems a little too cool for me, and that's unusual. But uh, I better leave it that way, all right? Matthew 6, open your Bible there if you will, and you're going to use your Bible this morning, okay? I want to teach you something today that... Uh, you, you may or may not be familiar with. I'm, I'm thinking that most in the room would not be familiar with this. And, but I want to help us to understand something that's uh, a phrase here in what's called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, it is not a prayer that Jesus ever prayed. Uh, it would not be a prayer that Jesus would pray because He would not have to pray, uh, forgive us our debts. Uh, he would not have to pray, forgive me of my trespasses. Uh, he didn't have any. And so it's a model prayer that he would teach to help his disciples to pray. But I want to look at the phrase in here this morning that the Lord uh, had us pray, would have us to pray. Verse number 13, where he said, You pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Now, other translations of the Bible will uh, change that and say, deliver us from the devil, or deliver us from the evil one. Uh, and they change that. But I believe what you have uh, in your King James Bible is correct. And I think it's exactly, and I think we'll see that as we unfold it for you this morning, uh, that, that it is, deliver us from evil. But what does that mean? When we pray that, what is it that we're asking God to do? Now, I want you to listen carefully. Evil and sin in the Bible are not synonymous. They're not the same thing. We sometimes may use them interchangeably, but <clears throat> that's not always the correct thing to do, and it's probably not the correct thing to do because they're not interchangeable. Sin means literally means to miss the mark. Uh, Romans 3.23, most of us know that. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And literally the word there is we miss the mark as you're shooting at a target and uh, the bullseye, so to speak. Everybody misses the bullseye. And it doesn't matter how close you come, you miss. Okay, We all fall short. That's sin. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4 says sin is a transgression of the law. Okay? That, that, that defines sin for us. We do something that we know God says we're not supposed to do. That is sin. That's why the Bible says when we know to do good and do it not, to Him it is sin. Okay? We know what we should do and we don't do it. It's sin. So it falls short of of perfection, it misses the mark. Evil is to is using sin to bring injury or harm to somebody else. Using sin to injure somebody else. 
let me, let me, let's look at some scripture. You're in Matthew 6. Look at Matthew 5. You may not have to even turn a page or one page. Matthew 5. Notice what Jesus said in verse 11. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. They're, they're saying evil. What are they trying to do? Bring injury to you. Bring harm to you. You know what God said that is? That's evil. Look further down in chapter, in chapter 5, verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Say what you ought to say. Make your yes, yes. Make your no, no. And, and don't go further than that or you'll step across the line and you'll begin to speak evil. You'll see that unfold a little more here in a minute. Look at verse 39. I say unto you that ye resist not evil. What's evil? Someone trying to injure or bring harm to you. Okay? But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. If any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. So evil is wanting to to, to injure or bring harm to another. Look uh, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Just go past Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 7. This should not be a surprise to us here. Luke 7, notice with me verse 21. Are you there? Luke 7, verse 21. In that same hour, He, that's Jesus, cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of, what's the next two words, church? What kind of spirits are they? Evil spirits. Why would they be called evil spirits? What did those spirits do to people? They hurt them. They harmed them. In, in many cases, remember the man who brought his son who was demon-possessed? What did he say? It throws him in the fire. It throws him in the water. It, when, when the evil spirits were cast out of the maniac of Gadara and they were put into the pigs, what did the pigs do? Ha, ran over the cliff and drowned in the sea. What were they doing to the man when they were inside the man? They were tormenting him. He was miserable. They're, that's why they're called evil spirits. Chapter 8 of Luke, verse 2, a certain and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And again, evil spirits. Go to the book of Acts. Go on past the Gospels and look. let's look at Acts chapter 9. That's interesting. In Acts 9, most of you will know, is the conversion of Saul, who will become the apostle Paul. And Saul, as you know, uh, before he was saved, what, what was his job? What, what was he doing? Persecuting the church. Trying to bring harm and injury to Christians. All right? And notice what the Bible says about Saul. Look at chapter 9 and verse 13. Ananias is going to receive him. In fact, the Lord is telling Ananias, and Ananias having this conversation with God. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man, talking about Saul, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. I've read about how much, what? Injury and harm he has done to believers. And when he said about injury and harm that he done to believer, what did he call it? Evil. He called it evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians in chapter 13. This is talking about charity. The great charity chapter. Of, some people call it the love chapter. I think it's properly translated charity. And in charity, talking about a believer and how important charity is. Notice it talks in verse 4, Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and charity thinketh no evil. It doesn't think to try to harm or hurt another person. That's charity. See, 
sin is the individual act of doing wrong. Evil is an alliance to bring harm or, or hurt to another person. Go to the book of Proverbs with me, will you? The book of Proverbs. Notice with me Proverbs 16, please. Proverbs 16. <clears throat> Evil is an alliance to bring harm to another person. Notice what Proverbs 16, verse 27 says. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. Digs up ways to hurt other people, bring harm to others. And how does he do it? In his lips there's a burning fire. And, and you'll find, we'll talk more about that later, how we can hurt. How many understand people can hurt and bring harm to others by what you say? Hmm? Or by what we comes out of our mouth. We know that to be true. Look at verse 30. He, that's that ungodly man, he shutteth his eyes to devise froward things. Froward things are, are things that are not, uh, not complying. You, you don't want to be governed. You don't want anybody telling you what to do. It goes against what anybody wants, okay? And so they're forward things. Moving, moving his lips, what does he bring to pass? Evil. Brings harm to other people. You see, look here. I think smoking tobacco is a sin. Selling it to other people is evil. I believe drinking alcohol is a sin, according to the Bible. Selling it to other people is evil. Because now, I'm not just, the sin is not just me. I'm affecting other people. I'm seeking to harm other people with that sin. And God says that's evil. Sin destroys you. Evil destroys somebody else. Sin brings injury to you. But evil brings injury to somebody else. So when Jesus says, teach us, that to, when He says pray, to deliver us from evil, is He saying to us, God deliver me from joining with somebody else to bring injury or harm to another person? evil. Over and over again you find evil. You go to the book of Nehemiah. There were two main uh, uh, opponents to Nehemiah rebuilding the wall. Nehemiah chapter 6 you introduced, I think maybe chapter 4 you introduced to him. Sanballat and Tobiah. Those were the two enemies. And, and they actually hired a guy to, to say bad things about Nehemiah in the work. And you know, when you read about in Nehemiah chapter 6, he says he brought this guy in and to give an evil report. Why is it an evil report? He's trying to hurt the people of God and the work of God. That's an evil report. That's what God called it. Look at Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. You, you should know when you go to Genesis 37, that's the start of the story of Joseph. And the rest of the Genesis, with the exception of a brief interlude in, in one of the chapters there in uh, 38 or 39, I think, um, it's all about Joseph and his dealing with his brothers. Notice what it says in chapter 37 and verse number 1. Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his, unto his father their, what? Evil report. They, they had a report that wasn't good. It was intended to harm. And by the way, who were they thinking to harm? Joseph. <laughs> and you find out they're going to carry that, they're going to carry that out. They didn't like him. Look down to verse number 17. When Joseph goes out to find his brethren, it says he's looking for them and he can't find them. And the man said, he asked a guy, and the man said, verse 17, they're departed hence, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. 
And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. Now that's not Alabama. But, uh, and then they, when they saw him, verse 18, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near to them, they conspired against him to do what? Slay him. They're going to kill him. And they said unto one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. And again, so the, the evil report was true. They're intending to bring harm and injury to Joseph. And you know the story about what they did. And God called it an evil report. Now, look in the New Testament with me, will you? Go over to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 14. Are you all right? You okay? Deliver us from evil. Acts 14. Notice verse number 1. Acts 14 verse 1. This is the missionary journey now with Paul and Barnabas. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds, what? Evil affected against the brethren. So the people came from, from uh, to the unbelieving Jews there. They began to stir up the people who were listening to Paul and Barnabas and their mind, made their minds evil affected. They, they affect them to where they didn't want to listen to them anymore. They wanted to hurt the work of God and the men of God. And God says they cause their mind to be evil, effective. That's evil. You see, our job is not to tear others down. Our job is to build others up. Okay? Let's look at some scriptures. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 4. We were in Ephesians in Sunday school this morning. Notice Ephesians chapter 4. Notice what he says in verse number 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. God says, here, there's no corrupt communication to proceed out of our mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. What's edifying mean? Build somebody up. Not bring harm to them not to injure them, not to hurt them, but to build them up. And, and, and anything else is corrupt communication that doesn't need to come out of our mouth. See, don't be one of those people who say, well, if I think it, I've got to say it. No, the Bible says a fool uttereth all his mind. So you don't have to say it just because you think it. The Bible says if we get a thought that is disobedient to what God says, we're to cast it out. Are we not? We're supposed, to get, we're supposed to cast it out. We're not supposed to say it out. We're supposed to cast it out. Okay? Notice 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Peter gives a Admonition here, notice verse 10. He that will love life and see good days. How many of you like that, that right there? How many say, how would you like to love life and see some good days? Who wouldn't? What did he say you have to do? Let him refrain his tongue from evil. First thing you got to do is keep your tongue from trying to bring harm or injury to somebody else. Wow. That seems so simple, doesn't it? And that's what God says we're supposed to do. We're supposed to keep building others up even when they're trying to tear us down. So Jesus teaches us to pray, deliver us from evil. Deliver me from seeking to harm or hurt or bring injury to somebody else. Now that's rare indeed in these days. Why? What does the Bible say in, I think it's 2 Timothy. And it says, in the last days, evil men and seducers 
will wax worse and worse. Evil men and seducers. What are evil men? Men who are intent on harming and injuring other people. We're, we see it. You just, you just have to watch the news every day. Uh, I, I hope you don't just have to go to church. But sometimes Christians can be pretty vicious too. And, and wanting to tear somebody else down and just bring injury to somebody else. There are times if you ever say something about somebody else and it's, and it's not good and it's not a good thing and it's not a positive thing, it's not something that builds them up and, and you have to stop and ask yourself, why did I want that person to know that about them if it's something bad? Why would I want them to know that? That's not being delivered from evil. In fact, look at 2 Timothy 3. You're in 1 Peter. Go to your left there. Go back past Hebrews again. I want to show you something in 2 Timothy. Because in verse 13 where it says, Evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceived and being deceived. Notice verse 12 comes before it. That all that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That persecution is that outside pressure. And listen, the outside pressure comes from people who want you to join with them to be evil, to say evil things, to bring injury to somebody else. Join with me and let's go against this person. Or join with me and, yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, he shouldn't do that or he shouldn't. And boy, we, we can get caught up in that. And it's usually spread with our, with our tongue. James chapter 3. Look at James chapter 3. In fact, James 3 is a great chapter on the tongue. Notice what James called the tongue. Notice James 3 and verse 8. The tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly... An unruly what, church? Evil. Full of deadly poison. Why? Because, boy, you can hurt other people with your tongue. You can bring harm to other people with your tongue. James 4, verse number 11, it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil. In other words, he that speaketh to bring injury or harm to his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And there's one lawgiver who's able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Saying, uh, don't, don't get to where you're going to pronounce judgment and you're going to bring harm to somebody else. Deliver us from evil. How's your tongue? How's your tongue this morning? Old the old family doctor we used to go to when I was a kid. I remember always going into his office and kind of worked out of his house, I think, in Hartville, Ohio, you know. And uh, go in there and a big desk and always had a big thing of tongue depressors. And the first thing you had to do was sit down and he'd tell you to stick out your tongue. Somehow those old guys could just tell what's wrong with you by looking at your tongue. You know, you can tell a lot about what's wrong with a Christian by looking at their tongue. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Notice 1 Peter chapter 2. Would you look there, please? 1 Peter chapter 2. We all know 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, don't we? Has newborn babes do what? Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. But wait, what comes before two? One. Good. Boy, that's great Bible teaching there, isn't it, Xavier? Xavier's right on it, brother. Number one, verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all, what? Evil speakings. Can I tell you number two never happens if number one never happens? If you don't, if you don't do verse one, you'll never get to verse two. 
Say, I just don't desire the milk of the Word like I want to. Well, then go to verse 1. Maybe the issue is you're not laying aside the malice, the guile, the hypocrisy, the envy, and the evil speaking. Maybe if you laid that aside, you'd have a hunger for the Word of God. You'd have a hunger for desire the milk of the Word. And then you begin to grow. You'll begin to grow in your Christian life. Sin happens to all of us. Nobody here today can say, I'm without sin. Okay? But you can say, and you can be without evil. You can be delivered from evil. We all hurt ourselves by sin. We don't want to. We don't, I, don't, I don't plan to. But we all have sinned. But evil is carried out. Evil is planned and carried out. When we join with someone else with the intent to bring harm or injury to another. That's evil. There is a difference between sin and evil. Say, okay, well, Pastor, what, what do we do? We do, we do three, three pieces of advice this morning. Number one, do not associate with those who do evil. Do not associate with those who do evil. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 14. Proverbs 4 and verse 14, the Bible says this, Enter not into the path of the wicked, go not in the way of evil men. Stay away from people who want to injure another individual, people who want to talk about somebody else, people who want to say bad things about somebody else. Say, what am I supposed to do? Stay away from them. Don't associate with them. And you know, oftentimes, the people who want to criticize or cause the injury to people who are serving God are people who aren't doing much for God themselves. And, and, and they're, you know, it's the, it's the Sanballat and Tobias that aren't building anything that are going to criticize the Nehemiahs that are building something and make fun of it or find, find uh, be, be critical and try to tear down. Hey, it was religious leaders who spoke evil of Jesus. When, when Jesus was before the, 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 the council, you know what they said? Uh, they, they, Pilate said to the crowd, you know what he said? What evil hath he done? Who is he harmed? Who is he brought injury to? And of course, what's the answer? Nobody. And that they yelled out, crucify him. Crucify him. Claire Barton, who was founder of the Red Cross, was asked if she remembered an especially cruel thing done to her years before. When she seemed not to recall it, a friend said, you don't remember, do you? And she said, no. I distinctly remember forgetting it. I distinctly remember forgetting it. So seek friendships that will build other people up, not tear other people down. Jesus was called the friend of sinners. Do you know, it's, it's interesting, Jesus, that, 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 I can, that I can find, never accused someone of sin, in sin. Even when they brought the woman taken in adultery in the very act, they said. He stooped down and wrote something in the ground. We don't know what he wrote. But it was convicting enough that all the men who had come to convict this woman all walked away. And, he, and Jesus looked at the woman and he said, Woman, where are thine accusers? And then she asked her a question. He said, Hath no man condemned thee? And she was wise. She looked at Jesus and said, No man, Lord. In other words, you still can. And that's why Jesus answered her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, sin no more. 
but he didn't speak evil of her. He didn't try to bring harm to her. He didn't try to hurt her. He rebuked those who would accuse her. So I'm not going to associate with people who want to do who want to bring harm to others or those who want to do evil. Number two, I want to keep busy doing good. Now look at Romans 12 with me, will you please? We're almost just almost through Romans 12. If you if you'll grab this, if you'll grasp this this morning, it'll help you. It'll help you love life and see some good days. Amen. Romans 12, at least three of us will. Romans 12. Notice with me, of course, the, the, the last verse of the chapter says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil, how? With good. So the, the, the antidote for wanting to bring harm or injury to somebody else is, be good. The opposite of evil is good. Okay? And so I want to bring good. And actually, let's back up then to verse 9 and get the whole passage here to understand what he's talking about. Let love be without dissimulation. That's hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor. A pretty strong word, isn't it? That's, if you say, I don't like something. You say, okay, he doesn't like that. If I tell you I abhor that, you're going to think, whoa. <laughs> you really don't like it, do you? Okay? Abhor that was evil. And how do I show that I abhor what's evil? I'm going to cleave to that which is good. Okay? Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. By the way, bless them which bless you. Is that what verse 14 says? Bless them which are kind to you. Bless them that agree with you. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So don't, don't, you, you just keep serving you keep doing what you know the Lord wants you to do. What did Nehemiah do? All they wanted Nehemiah, they tried all kinds of different things to get Nehemiah to stop. And Nehemiah wouldn't stop for anything. And, and in 52 days, they finished all the wall around Jerusalem. It was an amazing, amazing task, an amazing feat. But he just kept on doing good. And never stopped. Joseph just kept on doing good. Despite the evil his brothers thought against him. And even when they came into Egypt. Did he, was, he, was he bad to them? No. He gave them grain and then followed their money back in their sack. He, they, they, they really they were scared to death because he was so good to them. They didn't know how to respond because he was so good to them and didn't try to retaliate. They overcame evil with good. The old preacher said, Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you possibly can. So keep doing good. And then let me give you number three. And you'll understand this. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's go back there again where we were earlier. I want to set the stage for you here. But, and some of you, if you're at the workers' dinner, you'll understand this. Uh, so what, listen, we're not going to associate with people who do evil. We're going to continue to just do good. 
And then number three, here's the third thing you do if you, you, you don't, you want to deliver me from evil and you've been practicing evil. You know what you do? Stop it. Stop it. What does it say? Look at 1 Peter 3, verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. Now wait, back up. Who's he, where, what's he talking about? Look at verse 1. Likewise ye... Who? Wives, be, sub, be in subjection to your own husbands. He's talking to wives and husbands. Uh-oh. You mean, he's talking where we live? Yeah. He's talking about where we live. In the context. Likewise, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them. Who's them? Your wife, your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor on the weaker vessel, uh, honor on the wife is under the weaker vessel, being heirs together, the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Be finally, be all of one mind, have compassion one of another, love his brother, and be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. He says you don't you don't do it anymore. When he says not rendering there, literally the word is something that means that, that you stop something that's already in progress. You stop it. You don't do it anymore. In fact, you should. It's best never to have started. But if you started and you say, "Well, I don't know. I'm just prone to be that way." Well, stop it. Don't render evil for evil. Don't you don't have to dish back what somebody dished out to you. You don't have to go there. You don't have to do that. Rendering there is a payback. You ever hear somebody say, I don't get mad, I get even. And they dish it out to me, well, wait till they see what I dish out to them. I've heard couples say that. Yeah, I think he, think he can do that to me? Wait till he see what I'll do to him. Yeah? And, and that's the context that he's dealing with. No, it... it it, it, we don't give back what's been given to us. He says, contrary wise, blessing. Blessing for what? Blessing for evil. Blessing for railing. And the word blessing, there's the word we get our word eulogy from. Eulogy is where they say something at a funeral and it says something good about the dead guy. Isn't it? They talk about good things and literally... In fact, it literally, it's a word that means to make something swell up. I know sometimes I've been at some funerals and heard them talking about the person I knew who had passed away, and I think, man, who is he talking about? <laughs> man, this guy, and it, he, he's dead. His head can't swell up, but if he's alive, his head would swell up, thinking, wow, I was all those things. I never knew that. That's what eulogies are. They tend to maybe make things bigger than what they really are. No, it's saying literally you can return a blessing for those who would bring railing to you or those who would intend harm to you. You just, you just don't return the evil and you return a blessing instead. And they won't know what to do with it. It would be very difficult to know how to respond to that. You say, why? Well, I, I can't do that. No, but you under the influence of the Spirit of God could do that. You, under the control of the Spirit of God, could bring a blessing back. You, with the Spirit of God, can render kindness for harshness. You can render blessing for railing. You will not render evil for evil. You know, it began back in the Garden of Eden. The the devil got Eve to join with him to try to bring harm and injury to God. And it was all over the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In fact, 
he's, he's still trying to slander and harm God. The devil's still in that business. And he's still looking for people that will join with him to bring harm to God. That's why, that's why he's called evil with a capital D in the front. Devil. Because his whole purpose is to bring injury and harm to God. I don't know about you. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't have anything to do with that. I'm to be, as Ephesians says, we're to live to the praise of His glory. We're to, we're to bring glory to God. We're to put God in a good light. Jesus, in Acts 10.38, when Peter talked about Jesus as His ministry here on earth, you know what He said? Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good. How do we overcome evil? Good. Doing good. You just go about doing good. Doing what you know God wants you to do. The greatest harm the devil can ever do to anybody. And the harm he tries to, to hurt God the most with is to take the people that Christ died for and see them cast into hell. And he partners with people all the time to try to bring harm to God, to say, you don't have to, you have to get saved. I have to ask Jesus, what's that all about? You're a good person. You do good things. You go to church. You help people when they need help. You give food, you gave food to that guy last week who was hungry. And we, we think of, he gets people to go all kinds of things. But you know what he wants to do? He wants to destroy you in hell. Don't let him do that. How do you overcome that? You accept Christ as your Savior. You trust what God has done for you. And you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Don't partner with the devil. Don't, don't, don't think you're going to hurt God. And listen, Christian, don't, don't allow yourself to be caught up with evil. I, I, I just, I get grieved how many times we're, we're, we're and, and preachers do. Talk about preachers. Talk about other preachers. Just to bring harm. Just to bring injury. Why? That's evil. Christians, to say things about other Christians, just to bring evil, just to be harmful, just to bring injury to them. That's evil. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. Would you pray that prayer and mean it? I often ask people when they want to receive Christ, are you willing to pray and ask Christ to be their Savior? Will you pray and ask Him to save you and will you mean it? Would you pray, God, deliver me from evil? Would you be good enough to tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your children, tell your close friends, say, hey, when I start saying something that is bad about somebody or going to bring harm to somebody else, and, and that's the only reason I'm saying is just to make somebody else look bad, would you stop me and say, you don't want to say that? So you can just stop it? Because I don't want to be evil. I want to be good. I want to overcome evil with good. So Jesus said, deliver us from evil. Let's make that our prayer this morning. Let's bow together, shall we? Father, we bow before you in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching of your word this morning. Father, thank you for the plainness of the Bible. Father, we're asking you now this morning that you have done your work. You've moved up and down these aisles and in and out of the rows and you've stopped at the occupied seats and Lord, you've spoken to the hearts of people this morning. Deliver us from 
evil. Talking to husbands, wives, teenagers, children, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, senior saints, talking to all of us, choir members, teachers, preachers, singers, all of us. And I would pray, God, this morning, you'd help us to be able to sincerely pray, deliver us from evil. Oh, God, help us that only what would proceed out of our mouth will be that which is good to the use of edifying, that would minister grace to the hearer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I wonder how many folks this morning could simply say, Pastor, I, there's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I needed to be saved and I knew Jesus was the Savior I needed. And there's a time in my life when I called on Jesus and I asked Him to be my Savior. And Pastor, I know that I'm saved this morning. I know that I belong to God because my faith is in Jesus Christ. Here's my hand as a testimony. Would you hold it up for a moment and say, That's me, I know that I'm saved. Could I see your hand? God bless you. You may put it down. If you're here today and would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure. If I died, if I'd go to heaven, I don't know that I ever trusted Christ as my Savior, but I appreciate you praying for me. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down and say, pray for me this morning? All right. The message was to believers, and Jesus spoke it to believers, to followers. I wonder how many believers here this morning could say, Pastor, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat today. And I will sincerely pray for the Lord to deliver me from evil. I, I don't want that in my life. I want to love life and I want to see good days. And I'm going to ask God to allow my tongue to refrain from evil. Pastor, God dealt with my heart today. Pray for me. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Praise the Lord. You may put it down. It'll transform your life. It'll transform your marriage. It'll transform your parenting. Transform where you work. Your co-workers who have relationship with you. Your family members that have relationship with you. It'll give you such a, an abundant life, I believe, if we'll just listen to what Jesus asks us to do. Father, I pray your blessing now in our invitation time. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts this morning, for decisions that have been made for thee. And Lord, I pray that each of us now would respond to what you've told us to do. I pray that as we bow our knee before you this morning, you'd hear our prayer. And Lord, we would pray to lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, I pray that it would show in our testimony, and it would show in our relationships, those who are around us and those who are close to us. And Father, that we would have words coming from our mouth that would build up and not harm or bring injury to other believers. Have your way in this invitation, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. The invitation hymn, the Lord has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you please? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. Some wicked way in me, cleanse me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin.
Um, you know, there's there's so many things that come to my mind. Um, you just somebody says something to you about somebody, and you say. Well, you know, that's the third job he's had. Why would you say that? Why would you say something that would just put that person in a bad light? Or if somebody's having a difficult time, you say, well, you know, that's the third marriage. Why would you want to say that? You see what I mean? We, we just say things and we let it come out so easily that is only, and if you receive information like that, you, you want to say to yourself, did I need to know that? Why did I need to know that? Just so I could think less of that person? Why would I want to somebody to think less of someone else? Would I want, would, would any of us want people to go around saying things that would make people think less of us? Hmm? That it may minister grace to the ear. What's grace? What's grace? Okay, unmerited favor. Is it something we deserve? No. Did you ever say something good about somebody and say, well, why'd you say something that good? They don't deserve that because I'm trying to minister grace. That's what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. No. Grace. Grace. God, God did it all through the Bible. Grace. Oh, that we could be like that. You know, I, I told you, my, uh, my mom is, I, I call her my mom. She's been my mom since I was 14. I'm older than 14 now. And, uh, you know, just the other week we were up there and, and someone saw a picture and they said, and they were talking to my, myself and my mom, and then they say, oh, we see the resemblance. I don't say, oh, well, she's not mine. No, I say, thank you. Thank you. Hmm? There is a resemblance. Amen? You see, let's, let's minister grace. Let's, let's, let's find the things that edify and build somebody up and not try to just tear somebody down. You never make yourself look better by or bigger by trying to make someone else be smaller. Never works. Never works. Amen? All right. Let's pray together. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you tonight. 5.30 Christian growth class, 6.30 for the evening service. All right? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us in this model prayer to say deliver us from evil. We understand what that means now. We understand that why we would pray that prayer because we need your help to help us we're we're just it's in our in our sinful nature to be prone to evil and lord i pray you deliver us from evil that the obedience to you would characterize our life as we talked about in the book of ephesians we love you thank you lord for each one that's here this morning I do, again, lift up those unable to be with us, that you would strengthen them, heal them, and they could be back with us very soon. Give us a good afternoon and bring us back safely for our service tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heads with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. We'll see you tonight.